This was an interesting game yesterday. Mississippi State 43, Auburn 34. At one point in this game, Auburn led 28-3. to And then at another point in this game, Mississippi State led 43-28. to You and I were both wrong on this. Uh, I felt really right about it early. And well, yeah. this thing flipped on a dime very quickly. And as soon as Leach figured out something, and I, was, I did not watch it close enough, I'm going to have to go back and watch it today and, and at some point tomorrow to figure out what the hell they found in that Auburn defense. Auburn could not stop them at all. I, the, the fake that Auburn did in the fourth quarter when they were down 30-whatever-it-was to 28. I think it was 35, 20, 36 to 28 or whatever. They were down by eight, I think. At that point, they trotted out the punter and rather than just, if you're going to go for it and you know that your defense can't stop them, wouldn't you rather have your offense on the field? Like, I, I they, don't... I, they ran They ran the exact same fake punt LSU ran last week. They saw LSU do it. This is what, this is what, look, my boy, my boy at winning Indiana football. See, I asked him, how, how do you guys draw plays? So he says that we all, all we do is steal. It's steal from everybody else. That's all they yeah. did. They saw LSU do this really creative thing, and they just thought, oh, we're just going to do that. We saw it last week. We'll try it this week. That was that was the most uncreative thing. Every team saw it last year, last week, and and every team saw, oh, if they come at you, stop that guy, but also don't let him throw the football because he's going to do the jump pass. They did exactly that, and this kid almost just picked it off. Like, Yeah. And because it's, he it's saw it too. To stop now that you know that it's a thing. Yes, the only way to do it is to surprise them. And when you are down in the fourth quarter and your defense can't stop them, you have to be expecting the fake. That's why it worked so well in the first quarter last week, but not in the fourth quarter this week because they are almost expecting a fake at that point. Like, you know it is a possibility because why in the hell would you punt the ball back? That, like, they're going to score from anywhere on the field. Why give them the opportunity? Just try it out, Bo Nix, and try something else. Like I, I don't, I don't uh, think Brian Harson has been out coached in an entire game this year. This game, he got out coached. Oh, he was majorly out coached. Uh, Will this, Rogers. This is this is, this right. is the oh. first L on him. I don't think there was anything he could have done against A and M to win that game. I think A and M was better than them across the A and M's defense bottled up that offense, and they just said you're not scoring, and they didn't score. And that and there's. I don't think there was any coach in the country that was going to help them score. I think A&M's defense showed up that day and nobody was getting in the end zone. Yeah. This is not that. This was this is Brian Brian's first L. Uh Bo Nix ran the ball two times for negative 3 yards. That is a bit of a concern. Obviously. But that's the game, right? We, that's the we've, game. We've, we've we've talked about that a hundred times. If you let Bo Nix loose, you're it's really hard to beat them. I don't think you're going to beat them. If you bottle him up, they can't beat you. What I'm shocked about is the fact that they did not even try to run Bo Nix. Like that has been a, a big part of their offense, and they they didn't do anything with it. Tank Bigsby, 16 carries, 41 yards. Johnson had one carry for 57 yards and a touchdown. Tank had two touchdowns, by the way. Uh, Jacquez Hunter had four carries for 12 yards. They couldn't really get it done on the ground. Bo had success, especially early. He was 27 out of 41, 377 yards, two touchdowns. But Will Rogers, my friend, when he got cooking, Oh, 44 out of 55 passing for 415 yards and six touchdowns, and they did it on the planes. Just unbelievable what they did. They outscored them 33-6 to six in the second half. Lane Kiffin said it best. That's the best offense of mine in college football. Yes. Like, I, I swear to God, uh, who God, who is the USC it quarterback? It drives me insane. It drives uh, me insane because I've been saying it for a decade, and people called me. Ridiculous. Lane comes out and says, and everybody believes him. Hold on. Uh, what's the Matt Leinart? Matt Leinart, the quarterback from USC that's on the the Fox whatever thing. But he came out last night during the Ole Miss game and said, "Hey, looks like like it's likely Ole Miss is going to go ten and two. What a year for Kiffin in Oxford or whatever." And I retweeted it and I said, "Let's pump the brakes on just chalking up W's. You always tell me this, and I am just as guilty of it as anybody else on this planet because I look at schedules and I'm like, yeah, they're going to beat so and so and so and so and da 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 da. But you still got to go to Starkville on Thanksgiving. 
That's going to be an amazing. This might be the greatest egg bowl we've seen in a long time. Yeah, you're probably right. Last year was pretty I'm gonna good. I'm going to tell you this. But- the nation better watch. This better be the number one rated football game in the country. It just – everybody is sitting at home. You're going to be in your meat coma. You, you get a damn TV on. Don't worry about the NFL game. This is going to be the game you're going to want to watch. Uh, out of 44 completions for Rodgers, by the way, they had 10 different guys catch passes. And Doesn't none of matter. them – None of this them. is Mike Leach's offense. Oh, that's what I'm saying. None of them got to 100 yards. One one time, one time in the history of Mike Leach has he had a monster receiver, and that team made it to number one in the country. Yeah. Michael Crabtree. That I was remember. a Crabtree year. Yep. Whew, gracious. All right, so Mississippi State gets it done. Uh, postgame win expectancy was only 59% for uh, Mississippi State, but, I mean, they were down 28-3. to three, So well, they were, Yeah, they were, down, they, they were down 25 points. Exactly. Uh, and they were on the road, so, you know, getting it done on the road at Auburn. Like, this, I, I still cannot believe I told, this. Hang on, hang on. I've said for all year they're going to finish with the weirdest resume in college football. Let me tell you this. They have twice as many wins over top 25 teams as they do over unranked teams. Just, just, Isn't that insane? Isn't that insane? How did this team lose to LSU in, in Memphis? I don't I don't get it. <laughs> Twice as many wins <laughs> over ranked opponents as they do over unranked opponents. It's gonna I've said it for three weeks. They're going to have the weirdest resume in all of college football when the season's over with. Yes. Derek jumped in, by the way, said, Chris, should I really get my popcorn ready? <laughs> I think so. Probably so. I think so. Probably I think so. Good. Well, here's the thing. It's Thanksgiving. If you're eating popcorn in the evening of Thanksgiving, that you're, you've done this all wrong. You've done it. You spent the entire day wrong, and you need to reevaluate your life. If you don't have somebody oh. making you Thanksgiving dinner, I would say give me a call, but I'm not going to be around. You find some friends and go mooch off of them. You can't eat popcorn for Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.